안녕하세요. 내강 논문 리뷰 내리 시작하겠습니다. 오늘은 특별히 어... 야니스? 야니스? What is your full name though? <웃음> 야니스 에라르비 플로리 야니스 에라이... 에라르비? 에라르비 플로리 플로리 맞아 오케이 okay, 맞아 <웃음> Thank you So um, today's pre, um, review no, uh, paper review will go in English Yanis is come from. I come from. Came from France. France yes. Can you please introduce yourself? A yes. Bit? So I come from France, and I studied mathematics and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, intelligence AI. Yes. Yes. And I came to Korea in the lab of Professor Sang Wan Lee mm-hmm. as a PhD student, mm-hmm. and it's my second semester mm. here. Mm-hmm. What is your research interest? What are you studying? So I mainly interested in. Trying to understand which structural predispositions, structural predispositions, predisposition. Oh. That's a difficult word. Yes, <laughs> complicated. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the structures in cognitive systems uh-huh. that allow them to adapt to new environments? Ah, uh, cognitive mm. system. When we have some uh, adaptation yes. into specific environment, uh-huh. how our cognitive function actually supported. Yes, that is your uh-huh. research concept. Exactly. Mm. Okay, sounds good. Mm. So let's go into our paper today. It's uh-huh. from Nature, uh-huh. and then title is "Spatial Transcriptomics Reveal Neuron Astrocyte Synergy in Long-Term Memory." Mm. Okay, it was published two months ago uh, by people from Stanford, I believe. And uh, so, yeah, spatial transcriptomics reveal neuron astrocyte synergy in long-term memory. So we're going to talk about specifically the formation. Of long-term memory. I see. So it's basically about the memory study, especially mm-hmm. long-term memory. Yes. I guess it. But in this paper, actually, it's quite long, like a 16 days or even a month, mm-hmm. not a day. Mm-hmm. And then, most uh, distinct point is now neuron and astrocyte synergy. Yes. So when we talk about the long-term memory or mm-hmm. memory. The core uh, target is actually neurons because neurons are coding the information and store the memory. Mm. But it, in this paper, they found something about astrocytes, mm. glial cell. Yes, mm. it's, it's quite natural. Uh, the, so the, the, the idea of this paper is that when, when you have uh, neurons that uh, create a memory within their circuits, well, the circuits needed a structure uh, in which it formed. And so the astrocyte can provide this with their interactions with the, with the neurons. So even though these actors are very different mm. within the brains, mm. they don't have the same genetic background, mm. they still manage to interact together in order to produce the emergent behavior of memory. Okay, so glial cell, there are many different types of glial cell and astrocyte is one of those. Yes. And then one of most abundant in terms of number, there mm-hmm. are many of astrocytes. Mm. And then as we know, the astrocytes are actually supporting neurons' function. Mm. Uh, so, and then they have different types of genetic expression. So that might be the reason why they also studied like spatial transcriptomics. Oh, yes. Transcriptomics, can you give a little idea about that? Yeah, what so that? the idea of spatial transcriptomics, so it's not new from that paper, but here it was really applied on a crazy scale. Mm. So the idea is that you have a tissue mm. and you put a reagent on that tissue to target a specific gene mm. and then you wash that reagent away and start over to target a different gene mm. and so in the end you kind of have a big picture of your tissue and on every point of your picture mm. you know uh, the level of expression of every gene that you tested I see so uh, all the cells although they have uh, same DNA yes. from the beginning but they express different types of proteins, so they mm-hmm. work. Uh, they have different types of function, mm-hmm. and then transcriptomic transcription is at the, the first uh, step to produce protein. Transcription mm-hmm. and translation, so we make a protein. Mm-hmm. So by inspecting, by examining the expression of transcript uh, transcriptions, mm-hmm. their RNA, mm-hmm. we can actually define or characterize certain neurons. Mm-hmm. Oh, this neuron would be important for this type of job yes. or this neuron is doing now working on this kind of work. And then spatial meaning we can act not, not is, uh, inspecting transcription in a single neuron, but on-site. in a on site. Mm-hmm. So there is a tissue mm-hmm. and we can see what uh, genes are expressed in where. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think to understand um, 
the, the conclusion and where the paper is taking us, you have to think of the brain as like an ant colony. Ant colony. Yeah. Ant colony. The, ants. Oh. the, the a colony of ants. The insect ant yes. colony. Yes. Okay. So you, you have a structure. Oh. So the colony or the brain. And within that structure, you have different actors, mm -hmm. the neuron and astrocytes, mm. or the different kind of hands. Mm. Depending on a genetic background, mm. they can do different things. Sure. So the queen can only lay eggs. Mm. The, the males can only mate with the queen, and the females can do everything else. Mm. So they take care of the children, they take care of the trash, they uh, can gather the food. But actually, when you take a picture of the ant colony, what you see is that the females tend to specialize in certain tasks. Mm -hmm. they, some females only take care of the children, mm -hmm. others only specialize in gathering the food. Mm -hmm. And so what this paper tells us is that when you look at the emergent behaviors of a structure, whether it's the brain or end colony, you cannot only explain it with um, the, the behavior of the small actor who is directly responsible for mm -hmm. that, but you have to look at the other actors that mm. exist within the same structures because they are bound to interact together. Mm. And so memory is an emergent behavior of the brain. Mm. And to understand memory, you have to look further than just the neurons who directly produce it. You have to think about the structures that allow the neurons to. Okay, connect. so ant colony is a metaphor that you are comparing. You are trying to give an example. Yes. Uh, we are not studying about ant here. Uh, uh. But, but your point is that the neuron might be encoding some of the information, especially oh. about the memory here, but not only for the neuron, but also for the astrocytes, they have an important role oh. to maintain the memory. So in this paper, by using transcriptomics techniques, they found very special astrocytic function mm -hmm. in long-term memory. Yes. That's the point of this paper. Yes. Okay, thank you for summary. Let's so, go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So, um, f first, before I present you the paper, I want mm -hmm. to talk a few minutes about what we've known before about long-term memory. Sure. So, uh, so before, neuroscientists think of memory mm -hmm. as memory engrams. Engram. The, these memory engrams are the physical embodiment of the transformation of volatile memory mm -hmm. into more stable forms. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's a conceptual like wording, right? Engram yes. meaning uh, somewhere uh. the memories are stored. Yes, mm -hmm. stored in terms of structures. Mm -hmm. So it, let's say you have a mouse that you put in a cage. This mouse, um, you train her to be afraid of a certain pain stimulus mm -hmm. in that cage. Fear conditioning. Yeah, fear conditioning, mm -hmm. Pavlovian fear. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you train the mouse to be afraid of pain in, the, in that context, mm -hmm. if you were to be able to look into your brain, mm -hmm. what you would see are these engrams in uh, green. As you're training the mouse, these engrams, so these physical places in the brain, will make more persistent connections mm -hmm. to plasticity or other means. Mm -hmm. And what we think happened is that if you, put, if you wait a few days, and you put the mouse in the same cage again, well, the context of the cage will activate the same engrams. Mm -hmm. And so the mouse will start to be afraid. She will remember that in that context, she had pain. Mm -hmm. But if you put the mouse in a different cage, the, this context doesn't activate the same engrams. Mm -hmm. And so the mouse has no reason to be afraid. Right. So here in, in this image, the green cells means engram conceptually. Yes. Mm. And then these green cells are storing the memory about the context where they got like a full shock. Mm. So they, once they came back, come back to this context A, mm -hmm. where they got the uh, shock, they recognize it because those similar neurons are activated again. Exactly. Mm. So they now show the freezing behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thing is that with recent advances in gene-based tagging or optogenetics, uh, for example, we've been able to actually manipulate these neuron ensembles. Mm -hmm. So researchers have shown that these neuron ensembles, neuron engrams, are both necessary and sufficient for the formation and recall of memory. Mm. So, so if we can actually activate those specific neurons, mm -hmm. we first need to label those neurons, mm -hmm. uh, and then later if we can activate it, Actually, they choose the freezing behavior. Yes. So here, if you 
if with gene-based tagging, you can identify roughly mm. where the engrams form as you're training the mouse. Mm. You put them, you put the mouse later, a few days later, in the same cage. If you can artificially silence these engrams, mm. people have shown that the mouse is unable to remember, to recall the context. So mm -hmm. she's no longer afraid. And on the contrary, as you said, if you put her in a different cage, but you artificially activate the engrams mm. that were deactivated, right. well, the mouse is starting to be afraid, mm -hmm. even though she has no reason to. Mm. Several mm. years ago, like uh, mostly Tonegawa group in MIT actually mm -hmm. deeply studied about these processes. Mm. Okay. Okay, we understand. Mm. Mm. But the thing is that well, we've manipulated them as neuron ensembles. Mm. But as you said in the introduction, mm. the, these neurons are not the only actors in the brain. Mm -hmm. They are intertwined in their surrounding structures and they interact with others. Glyer so, cells. Yes, with mm. glyer cells. So we've known that memory is not only about the neurons, mm. but the other actors that play part in the formation of long-term memory has not been understood well so far. Right. In, in our neuroscience field, we have mostly focused on the neuronal function. Mm. And then now, very much uh, the astrocyte or some other glyer functions are very much uh, interested in nowadays, yes. more currently. Mm. Mm. And this is one of the, those studies. Mm. Yeah, this is where the paper comes in. Mm. So they investigate the mechanisms at hand behind the formation of long-term memory by focusing on the same kind of experiment, Pavlov and Fear. And they specifically study a zone of the brain called the basolateral amygdala. So the PLA is a zone in the brain where when the neuron is activated, it shows that the mouse is stressed or experiences fear. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. it is well known that amygdala is important for our emotional encoding, yes. right? So now many study actually shows that the amygdala is not only for fear or anxiety, mm -hmm. it also can like, make more positive emotion too. Mm -hmm. There are different types of neurons. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the uh, Pavlovian fear conditioning, if you actually destroy the BLA, actually, the memory will be gone, mm -hmm. for example. So this is very critical mm -hmm. uh, brain area mm -hmm. uh, where the fear memory is stored. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to study it when you study Pavlovian fear, mm -hmm. right? the long-term memory. So I will detail the experimental process later, but the idea is that you have fear mice, fear recall mice, that you put in a, in a cage, you train them to be afraid, then you wait a few days and put, put them in the same cage again. Mm, the uh, recalling the memory yeah. where they got stimul uh, fuchsia, mm. so they freeze. So then you can get their brain and analyze what's going on. I will detail later the experimental process, okay. but that's the idea. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, by applying, as you see, special transcriptomics on this crazy scale, mm -hmm. with the, I think there are 2.5 million cells that they exploited. 2.5 million. million cells, yes. that's crazy. Mm. And so they showed that they were able to trace the formation of the memory engrams. Mm. They also showed that the astrocytes, not only the neurons, experience persistent changes in their gene expression mm -hmm. and they observed that interactions between neuron and astrocytes mm -hmm. um, were necessary mm -hmm. for the formation and recall of fear. Memory. Okay, so mm -hmm. again, so this colorful expression mm -hmm. actually it shows the RNA expression, right? Yes. So by having this trans transcriptomics analysis, mm -hmm. we can label the single cells with different color mm -hmm. and then can see where they are. Mm. The point is that before, um, when these techniques are not well developed, we need to actually select the neurons. And then in that process, we remove all the other types of cells like mm -hmm. astrocyte and glyer cells. So we basically remove those information. But now by having this technique, we also can uh, test exam the astrocyte together with mm. neurons. Yes. Then the researchers are finding some noble point mm -hmm. uh, that happening in the astrocyte. So yes, you're taking a more global picture this time. Mm. And so here we'll study the BLA, so the zone highlighted here. Okay. So yeah, we'll zoom in in the future figures, we'll zoom in that. So I will detail the experimental process. So uh, as I said, there's a fear recall mice. So the mice that are in the cage that you're trying to be afraid with then after a few days recall and then you get their brain. Mm. But like every good experiment, they also have a control group. They also compare these fear mice to the no fear mice. Who doesn't 
receive the fish out. Yeah, mm. so no pain, but mm. you still put them in the cage in the same context. Maybe the neurons will be just uh, encoding, processing the in, uh, contextual information alone. Yes, mm. Mm. not the pain. Mm. Mm. And the no recall might so, or train, but not put in the context. Okay. Okay. So, but the thing is, it's kind of pa paradoxical, right? Because you have, you're trying to study the memory mm. of living beings. And in order to study that memory and understand it, understand it, you have to get their brain with special transcriptomics. So you have to kill the mice. Right. And Once so, we have to uh, mm. kill, kill the mouse, we can see it. Yes. Mm. You're trying to see the memory of something that is dead. Mm. So how can, you, how can you know that the mm. neurons that you see are associated to memory? Mm. And so what they did is that they used uh, actually a trap to across AI-14 mice mm -hmm. whose cells have the uh, particularity of uh, expressing TD tomato. TD tomato is like a fluorescent protein, mm -hmm. red, red color. Yeah, red fluorescent protein, TD tomato. When these cells are both stimulated, so when they activate, and when they're exposed to the tamoxifen reagent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the point is that you have these mice, and just before you put them in the recall, mm -hmm. you inject them with tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. And so when they're in the cage, re recalling the context, mm -hmm. every neuron that will fire will fire and be exposed to tamoxifen. And so they will leave a trace of TD tomato. Okay, so basic idea is that, so following the process that as you just explained, using trap mouse that mm -hmm. crossed with AI-14 mouse, somehow during the recall, we can label the activated neurons during this recall process. Yes. And then those neurons are going to express TD tomato. Mm. So later by uh, looking at those expression, oh, these neurons are activated during that fear experience when they recall the fear memory. Yes. So we define these neurons as a memory engram. Mm. The, these neurons are storing the fear memory. Yes. That's the basic idea? Yes, okay. that is the basic idea. Mm. Mm. And as you see here, so it's the BLA of the fear recall mice on mm. the right and mm. no fear on the left. You see that we see the engrams, as you said, uh, as clumps of mm. TD tomato. They have left a trace of TD tomato when they were activated. So basically, there are more <coughs> number of those uh, red cells because these neurons, the, this mouse, the uh, basal retro amygdala actually might be more activated mm. when they feel the fear. Yeah. The no fear group has There's, relatively smaller number. Yes. Why is that? Why is that? Why do they still have TD tomato? They are mm -hmm. still scared, mm -hmm. even though they are called no fear mice. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because they are animals mm. and so you put them in a cage mm. you change them context mm. you inject them with tamoxifen mm. and so it's, it's the process itself could be a little fearful yes mm. we're actually seeing mm. that it's fearful mm. and as you see the graph here like about 15 percent of the no fear mice are still afraid so you're manipulating something that is alive and you will scare it so even though you could no fear they still have fear right but still less fear than the one who had pain in addition to that, actually, uh, although this group is using this uh, trap method mm -hmm. to label specific neuron, this tamoxifen uh, technique is not perfect. Actually, C4 here is a false trap. So when neurons are activated, we, we can label uh, those cells. But there are just uh, many neurons activated by the other reasons. Mm. So if you actually you utilize this technique, you will see a lot of random neurons also mm. variable. So my point is, it's not perfect technique, mm. but uh, something that we can try. Mm. Okay. But still, I think you could uh, characterize the engrams by their density, mm -hmm. right? By the clumps. Mm. Yeah. So just in this context, we can we now define these uh, TD tomato expressing neuron as a memory engram neurons. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay, so remember what they're trying to show? Mm -hmm. They're investigating the formation, the conditions that allow for the formation of long-term memory. Right. So now that they know where the memory is, mm -hmm. they can look at the gene expressions around the TD tomato. And that's what they do now with special transcriptomics. So, uh, as we said, it's a, it's a method that gives a map of gene expressions on site. So if you look at the BLA, you can uh, see that uh, the authors were able to discriminate between different types of neurons based on their gene expressions. So you have the inhibitory neurons and the excitatory neurons, and you can actually map them in the BLA. 
but you can go further. You can look at the detailed gene expressions of those neurons inside and outside the clumps of TD tomato. Mm -hmm. So that's what they did here. So given the theoretical mice, they compared the gene expressions of the neurons inside and outside the engrams. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we see here in these graphs. So these are called uh, U-test uh, 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 graphs. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that every point for a given uh, type of neuron, every point here corresponds to a certain gene. Mm -hmm. And if that gene is high on the graph, mm -hmm. it is likely that from outside and inside, it has changed its uh, probability distribution. Mm -hmm. And if you go on the right or on the left, its expression is uh, stronger or weaker. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at the inhibitory neurons, you compare them outside and inside the engrams, you see that the PANC uh, gene has changed distribution because mm. it's high, and it's also stronger. Mm. Same for TAC2, it has likely changed, less likely, but still likely, and so, it's weaker. Okay, so this is like a volcano plot. Yeah, it, it is a volcano plot. Yeah, so uh, here, more simply, by testing their expression, we can now say PANC, this gene, mm. is highly expressed more expressed after, uh, after those memory recall in mm -hmm. inhibitory engram neurons. Inhibitory engram neurons, garbaragic engram neuron mm -hmm. that is activated during the right memory, uh, they actually more express PANC mm -hmm. and they much less express TAC yeah. to uh, genes mm -hmm. compared to the other non-memory neurons. That's the point. We say PANC is upregulated and TAC downregulated. Right. Mm. Okay. That's the, one of the core findings. Yeah, right? that's a core finding. Mm -hmm. um, especially like, so they compare inside and outside. And by seeing that the gene expressions are different, mm -hmm. it kind of gives a, a genetic signature of the neural engrams. Mm -hmm. okay. And so they're able to like, describe the dynamics of memory uh, engram formations. Okay. So, We've seen the, we've compared the gene expression inside and outside the engrams for the fear mice. Mm. But remember, they are different kind of mice. So now they com they are going to compare the gene expression of the no fear mice and the fear mice mm -hmm. uh, in order to see what changes genetical term were induced by the recall of memory itself mm -hmm. rather than the consolidation. And so I, we'll go uh, quickly on the findings here, but it's like a list of points that confirm recent findings. Uh, for example, if you look uh, at the gene expressions of the inhibitory neuron GPRID8, so cabergic neuron, well, you see that it has changed its gene expressions a lot compared to other types of neurons. Mm -hmm. So what it says is that this kind of neurons are actively involved in the memory recall, mm -hmm. which confirms uh, previous findings. Okay. Uh, also here, if you uh, put a list of the genes and compare them between no fear and fear mice, mm. you see that some are uh, downregulated or upregulated. And uh, actually, you can see that the genes that make the MAPK pathway or the BDNF signaling are indeed upregulated, mm. as shown in previous works. Mm. Okay. And also another finding is that the neuron engrams, uh, they switch the production of neuropeptides, mm -hmm. which are modulators of neural activity. Mm. And that will be useful later. But also, I think that's why this paper is great, because they show that with the, their method, not only can they confirm previous mm. findings, but they can also make um, uh, research uh, propositions. They can propose research directions for researchers. And one of the points mm. of this paper, uh, the thing that we have to remember is this gene expression test is happening after nine days after memory recall at day 16. Mm. So it's basically happening 24 day 24 from the initial training, right? Yes, 25, 26. Right. Mm. And then when they sacrificed the animal, the animal mm. actually didn't experience anything. They just mm. sacrificed. Mm. So and we have to remember these genes are just um, normally expressed after those strong experience. It's a permanent change, right. persistent change. Mm. Mm. And, that, and then these expression is not like triggered by any specific stimulation mm. in that acute uh, situation, mm. right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a more persistent and uh, passive change. Mm. Constitutive expression. Mm. And after those learning, okay.
So just uh, points uh, for future research directions, they also see that some of the genes that are important here mm -hmm. are actually involved in neurological disorders. Mm -hmm. So they tell to the researchers who are interested in studying dementia, schizophrenia, epilepsy, etc. Well, you should maybe look at the functional role of mm -hmm. these genes in memory right. formation as well. And then the, all those uh, significant change, the gene target would be a next following uh, research question for those group. Yes. Okay. That's why it's so great, mm. I think. Okay. So to remind us what we've shown so far, mm. we've shown that by comparing inside and outside the engrams, mm. that these have specific genetic signature. Also by comparing um, between different mice, we show that the, the neurons change their gene expressions mm. depending on uh, memory consolidation. And also they've proven the efficiency of their method, of the massive method, uh, by being able to confirm previous studies and suggest future research directions. Mm. So it's over, right? Yeah, it's very interesting, but uh, to be honest, not super like mm. fascinated again, yeah. not yet until here. Yeah, until here, because yeah. something is missing. Right. We've only talked about the neurons. Right. There are neurons everywhere. Mm. but. They're not only the neurons in the brain, mm -hmm. they only make for about 50% of the cellules. And we know that other actors, oligodendrocytes, microglia, mm -hmm. they can regulate the neural activity. Mm -hmm. And so remember when you're taking a picture with mm -hmm. special transcriptomics, mm -hmm. on every point you get the detailed gene expressions. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing here are the expressions of those genes. Mm -hmm. But you know that some of the genes are unique to the neurons or astrocytes or microglia, oligodendrocytes. Mm -hmm. And so you're also able to discriminate between these different actors. Mm -hmm. So we've only looked at the neurons here, but you can look at everything else. And here they're going to look at the astrocytes. So those that blue on it is showing <coughs> astrocytes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and so, so this is a high dimensional reduction of the space of gene expressions. Okay. So the similar uh, actors have similar gene expressions, so they form a cloud. Okay. Um, so why are they looking at the astrocytes here? They could look at other things. But here they also observed, as we said, that the neurons and grams change the, produ the production of neuropeptides. Uh, especially if you compare the, the expression of neurotensin in the theoretical mice and no fear mice, you see a clear increase in their expression. So, but actually, they observed that the only actors within the BLA that have receptors for neurotensin are the astrocytes. So at this point of the paper, they've shown that the neurons persistently changed to produce neurotensin, mm -hmm. and the only actors who can receive it are the astrocytes. So naturally, they are thinking, well, maybe the astrocytes undergo persistent changes as well. Mm. And that is the direction of the paper, and that is novel. So now they investigate the role of what they call the astrocyte remodeling. When you have an astrocyte, you can even further subdivide it in five uh, genetic uh, subcategories. Uh, of astrocytes. Of astrocytes, mm -hmm. from type 1 to type 5. And so if you uh, plot them in the gene expression space again, you actually show that all these subtypes are, sub are uh, continuously connected. They form a path uh, like this. Mm -hmm. So the different colors are all connected. So what it means is that if you're astrocyte of type 3, you can continuously change your gene expression little by little until you become type 2. And you can travel like this and become type 1, uh, type 2. So four. you mean a single astrocytic, astrocyte neuron can actually transform into different types? Remodel itself. Remodeling mm. itself. Yes. Oh. Mm. That's what they see here in that space. Mm. Mm. And what they observed is that during memory consolidation, so between the no fear and fear mice, mm. the A2 astrocytes transition to become A5 astrocytes. From A2 mm. to A5. A2 to A5. Uh, the astrocytes around the memory neurons. Mm. Is that? Uh, it's not around. Uh, I don't know if it's specifically around the engram neurons. Um, I think it's the, the average of the astrocyte within the BLA. Uh, overall average. Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, what, okay. What, we don't know where those astrocytes who actually has a transformation into from two, two to five? Five yes. to two? Two to five. Two to five. Two to five. 
uh, those a overall average of those uh, types are increasing in the BLA mm. region. Mm. But we don't know specifically whether they are just get around the memory neuron or not. Yeah, I think we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Yet, <laughs> but uh, here they see that the astrocyte one they kind of disappear. Mm. I mean, they are much less astrocytes. So here there's another plot where they plot the, um, the expression of the false gene mm. in the astrocytes between the no fear and the fear mice. So no fear in blue and fear in, in orange. And so the false gene is expressed when the cell is activated. And so based, in, uh, based on the amount of uh, expression of false gene on the death of the mouse, you can know if that cell was activated on the death of the mouse or not. And so here they see that on the death of the Nofia mice, only the astrocytes of type 1 and type 4 were activated, mm -hmm. whereas on the fear mice, only the type 4 and type 5 were activated. Mm -hmm. And so what they think happened based on that graph is that the astrocytes who disappeared from the Nofia to fear mice, they were activated before. So since the only ones were also activated on type 5, they think the astrocytes of type 1 transition to become type 5. I see. So, I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, in Korea, when high school students become like third grade, they, mm -hmm. now they prepare Sunung. So, then they, ask, they might be a neuron, the students, mm -hmm. so they should study hard. But not only the neuron, the students, but their family, their mother, also have to change their many behavior yeah. to support their children. So they, they will behave different way, they will work in different way, so they become different person, mm -hmm. for example. It's, it seems like that. This is, yeah, this is a better metaphor than the end colony. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah it's the, the main actors changes, but mm -hmm. also the supporters of the actors. Sure. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And they undergo changes that are persistent, mm -hmm. which is a novel finding. Ah. But it's still not enough. So persistent means that oh. This kind of transformation or gene expression change is not happening very shortly, yeah. not temporal. It happened over the 25 days. Right. So once we experience very extremely fearful like situation, mm -hmm. we will have that strong memory inside in the BLA, for example. Yeah. And then the surrounding astrocytic neurons are also changing together with those neurons. Mm -hmm. And then that change is actually persisting at least like a, a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you have to show mm -hmm. that these changes are functionally linked to oh, memory. Oh, that's right. Whether this is really important, meaningful yeah. change related to memory or not. We yes. didn't test it yet. That's what they need to do. Okay. Final uh, point. Mm -hmm. So they did that by just removing the calcium in the astrocytes. From the astrocytes. Yes, by using uh, AV, mm -hmm. they just were able to remove the, the calcium. Mm -hmm. And so the effect was that all the orange astrocytes here cannot be activated ah, Okay, just quick notice that. Mm. So for the, I mean, the astrocytes are not firing like a neurons. But when they have more functional low, the calcium signaling is important. Mm -hmm. So by removing the calcium signaling in the astrocytes, then we can block their function. Mm. That's the point right here. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. So now we we block the calcium signaling in the astrocyte and then see what's happening. Mm. Mm. And so you're going to test the response of the mouse to uh, fear recall. Mm -hmm. So in different contexts. Mm -hmm. So I, they had just a, a sound, a tone test. And so if you compare the behavior of the normal mice and the, uh, and the mouse in which you remove the calcium, where you see that their response to fear on the context test is altered. Mm. Their response to fear on the tone test is altered as well, but not their response to fear, not their response to fear in the altered context. So remember the cage, the red cage and the blue cage? In the red cage, you're supposed to be afraid because you're remembering. Mm. And they show that when you're supposed to remember, you don't react normally. But when you're not supposed to remember in the blue cage, well, your behavior doesn't change. And so it means that what was added here was your recall of memory. Mm. So meaning it, this is more memory specific. It's a memory specific. Yes. Change. And then by uh, inactivating the exercise function, we can, in, we can really indeed uh, reduce the fear response, fear yes. memory. Mm. Okay. 
So there's a That's function. a final figure. No. No. We have more. <laughs> okay. No. Because oh. remember what we did with the neurons? Uh -huh. With special tonics, we get a big picture. Uh -huh. So uh, here we just compare uh, from mice to mice, uh -huh. but we can look within the fear mice. Okay. And so here we, we know that the engrams are embedded in uh, local structures. Mm -hmm. Especially we know that there are something called perineural nets that modulate the neural activity of the engrams by basically prote protecting them from the outside. Perineural net, meaning uh, uh, around, around the neurons, yes. networking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think net, net is networking. Net is a net, like a fish net. Okay. Mm. So with special transcriptomics, but likely that 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 they should have some of connection. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe networking, a uh, local network. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Yes, that's the point, but they are communicating with neurotensin. Mm -hmm. So um, they can just look, uh, because it's an on-site uh, visualization method, they just have to look around the clumps of TD tomato. Mm -hmm. Around the engrams, mm -hmm. they look at the gene expression of the astrocytes. Mm -hmm. And what they see for the particular gene LGFVP2, they'll see that the distribution in the, in the astrocytes around the engrams, mm -hmm. so the periengram astrocytes, is different than the other mm. astrocytes. And also they see that if you compare the two uh, type of mice, that the astrocytes are also more, uh, uh, of more false expression. And so here they have two, find they have two uh, observations, that there's an upregulation of a specific gene, and that upregulation is correlated with an activation. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay. here is the data. So the, that astrocytes gene expression change actually more specifically happening right around the memory neurons. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yes. It, especially when they has a specific memory, fear memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, we are investigating, investigating the astrocyte based on the observation of neurotensin mm -hmm. and neurotensin receptors. Mm -hmm. So since they're receiving something, receiving something, they're interacting. That's what it means. And so, yeah, we're looking at the astrocytes who are interacting with the neurons here. And so here the idea is that they have a gene expression that leads to an activation. Mm. And as we saw, the activation leads to memory. So they're thinking, if we endure that gene, maybe we can endure the activation, so the memory. And just like before, that's what they did. They managed to uh, deactivate the LGFPP2. And they showed that the response to fear, the context test, or to the tone test is altered but not the, the altered context. Okay. Okay. So what they've been proving here essentially is that these neuron astrocyte interactions uh, exist and they are necessary mm. for the recall of memory. I see. Actually in the article they talk about um, memory formation, mm -hmm. but I rather use memory recall mm. because personally I think that here they're not really testing the formation of memory more than the recall. Um, since you cannot access the conscious experience of the mouse, so when you're hindering a reaction to fear, you don't know if you're hindering the, the ability to remember mm. or the feelings mm. themselves. Right, so their test is mostly happening uh, long after the training. Mm -hmm. So we can conclude like, oh, these expression or these astrocytic functions might be important in that time point, like 24 days later. Mm. That's, that's very meaningful, but we cannot really say whether these are, uh, neurons are really important for memory formation itself. Mm. Right, okay. That is your point. Th that is my point. Mm -hmm. I think given like the, the scale of the method, mm -hmm. I would have hoped, mm -hmm. maybe for future works, that they actually apply special transcript trans mm -hmm. transcriptomics mm -hmm. to the mice that are being halted here. Yeah, but one of technical hurdles in this study is that so they first label the neurons with mm -hmm. the TD tomato, but mm -hmm. it's going to take a few days at least. So they waited like nine days. Um. So although they want to test uh, the memory formation acquisition period, once they, while they are waiting for the ex ex incubation of the expression, by uh, TD tomato expression, mm -hmm. it already has been like nine days. So they cannot actually say something for that. Ah. So they, we may need another new technique, mm. more quickly label certain memory engram neurons mm. for that question. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think um, 
Yes, but they are also considering the formation of the engrams. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, if you can show that these engrams are absent mm. in the altered mice, even after nine days, well, it means that the memory didn't form. Mm. Whereas if they are still here, it means that the memory was impaired, the recall itself was impaired. Mm. Okay. So this is the, basically the, the main finding of the, of the paper. But just as a conclusion to hint for future works, mm -hmm. they show that um, there are similar uh, cells present in the BLA and MPFC, mm. and th these cells also share uh, overlapping transcriptional signatures. Mm. In the space of gene expressions, the, the clouds that make the cells of the BLA and the MPFC are intertwined. And so it kind of hints that the, these interactions between the neuron astrocytes are more global marker. So these uh, interaction between astrocyte and neuron is mm. not only happening in the BLA, during this memory formation, but also MPFC, which is also involved in memory formation mm. of fear conditioning, is also ha having similar change. Yes. That's okay. even even uh, for mouse who had no fear. Even no fear mouse. Yeah, even no fear mice. Uh -huh. So that's why they think it's the case for. Uh, it's a general, a global marker of mm. memory, mm. of memory. Mm. As you see here, the two columns between BLA and MPFC are very similar. Mm. Similar gene expression. Uh, meaning, be, not fear, meaning that the, the information mm -hmm. encoded in MPFC region is not specific, specifically about the fear emotion. Mm -hmm. many, maybe the other aspects would be uh, stored in that region. That's in the, the point. MPFC, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, just to conclude. Mm -hmm. So there are big questions with what are the mechanisms that end behind the formation of long-term memory. Mm -hmm. And so, Firstly, they showed that uh, by comparing the differenti differentiated gene expressions inside and outside the engrams, we showed that there were a signature for memory engrams. Also, secondly, they observed that there were persistent changes that were functionally linked to memory formation in the gene expression of the astrocytes. Mm. And finally, they established that there were interactions between these neuron and astrocytes and that they were essential for the recall of long-term memory. And so after reading that paper, uh, you, you should not only think as engrams as a persistent change in neuronal circuitry, but you also have to think about the whole array of changes, of persistent changes, mm -hmm. around the locality of the circuitry. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not only about the neurons themselves, but the liquid structure that allow the circuits to form in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that is what long-term memory is really about. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, while I'm listening to this talk, this presentation, one idea is that, you know, exercise is basically doing some supporting role while neurons are encoding the information by having like action potential. But exercise actually can affect these neural encoding mm -hmm. by supporting or sometimes they can remove, uh, destroy the synapse so they they are in that sense eventually they are gonna affect the memory or some other brain function too mm. that's the point of astrocytes study and then uh, more practically one possibility is that when someone has like a ptsd mm -hmm. a super strong like fearful experience and then the memory cannot be gone so by not the neuron but by manipulating astrocytes function in the mm -hmm. amygdala for example if we can actually reduce those P T ptsd symptom that's mm -hmm. gonna be another uh, great approach to mm -hmm. deal with those uh, mental disease yeah but but since it's such a they hint that it's a global marker of memory formation mm -hmm. it might hinder other feelings and uh, might be very tricky <laughs> okay i see mm -hmm. so that's it today? Yes. Okay, thank you, great. Uh, this, is about, this was about the astrocyte and neuron interaction during the long term, like a remote memory uh, maintenance. And then they, by, by using spatial transcriptomics, they find specific target of the gene expression in the neuron, but also in the astrocyte too. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, we are end up here. Thank you very thank much. You.